Research is the systematic investigation of theories and hypotheses. It aims to analyze the problem, synthesize existing finding, findings, collection of data through appropriate methodology, interpreting your results and drawing conclusion. So research aims to create new, new knowledge. It aims to contribute to the disciplinary uh, knowledge. Developing research skill is vital for learning. Yeah, it's important for learning because you can reflect on your ideas, on your methods. It allows you to integrate other work of other authors and so on. So critical part of research is evaluation. Evaluation can be carried out in two ways. Firstly, a student may self-evaluate his or her work. He or she may evaluate their sources of information or their methodology, etc. A teacher may also uh, evaluate a student's work. <coughs> so the RSC for this research was used to evaluate students' um, assessment. However, one should realize, realize that there is a need for feedback mechanisms. So the aim of this research is to highlight the importance of pedagogy that incorporates feed forward within triple loop learning. And now I would like to call upon Hina to discuss the details of the method and the results. Now this survey was carried out in semester 2 of 2015 when the course was coordinated by Dr. Keith Morrison. Uh, the students were surveyed uh, using a research questionnaire that covered all facets of the RST. So they were asked to give their perspectives of their own ratings of the various skills. Now there are 20 life and scale questions. Some students selected from strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree and not applicable. The response rate, there were a total of 21 out of 31 students that responded to the pre-RSD survey and 16 out of 30 students responded to the post-RSD survey. So then we analyzed the difference between the pre-RSD survey and the post-RSD survey ratings by treating them as two independent samples. So going on to the results then. So this is just a table that shows all the questions that we had and how they mapped onto the various facets of research and then the mean rating for pre-RSD mean rating for post-RST and the difference that we got between pre-RST and post-RST. Sorry, it's, um, yeah, the font size is a bit small, but I'll explain it later. Okay. So out of the 20 questions, we found that in most of the questions, the students showed a significant difference in the pre-RST and post-RST rating. So basically, all, in all the facets of research, we saw a significant difference between the pre-RSD and the post-RSD ratings. And in about, out of those, like so out of the 20 questions, in about 75% of the questions, we saw a difference between the pre-RSD and the post-RSD ratings. So now I'll hand over the... To better understand the results, I think it's, um, we must look at the triple loop learning uh, pedagogy which was used in PC425. So I'll start with looking at the RSC framework. The RSC framework was mostly used for institutional purposes. That is to provide evaluation and to provide re repeated feedback. So this is the RSC framework and four levels of uh, assessment uh, frameworks were developed that fitted our curriculum. So you have RSC level 1, level 2, level 3, and level four. And all of these assessment frameworks incorporated graduates, uh, graduate attributes as well, such as critical thinking, teamwork, communication, and etc. So based on, um, on this framework, students were provided feedback. So here are some examples of feedback. And so providing feedback is one part. It's not a complete pedagogy. And what happens when students do not understand the feedback, what do we do then, right? So understanding feedback. So this is where increased dialogue, apart from feedback, is necessary. You need to maintain and establish dialogue between the instructor and the student, and between the peers as well. So 
feedback combined with increased dialogue then leads to feed forward mechanisms. Feed forward mechanism, as the name suggests, is feeding information into the future. It's feed forward uh, with contrastive feedback. You're feeding information on something that's already done. That's feedback. Feed forward and feeding information into the future. So um, examples, this is an online course, right? So examples of feed forward mechanism included modal interaction. Um, there were afternoon classes held for the Dada students and we captured this on uh, through audios and the audios were uploaded on Moodle. Moodle announcements were already um, also made uh, about, about the key discussion points. So here with me I have an example of feed for Okay, sorry, don't read. Um, something's wrong with the sound. So, it is basically an introductory video where the lecturer is explaining the contents of the major assignment before the major assignment is released. So that's feed forward. You're feeding information into the future. So why is feed forward necessary? Feed forward is necessary because it establishes dialogue. It's, it um, establishes dialogue for self-regulatory learning. So self-reflectory learning, as the name um, suggests, is self-initiated. It's self-directive process. So students take up time to manage their assignments. They take up time to develop their research aims, their research questions, their hypotheses, their methods. And one example that I would um, like to discuss for self-reflectory learning is the field work that we had for uh, PC425. It was a one-day field work, a community-based research, where students were divided into different groups, such as water security, food security, health, energy, and so on. So the teaching team only divided the students up into groups. Everything else was left to the students, because this is self-regulatory learning. So after the same um, the students quickly, we were amazed to see how well coordinated the students were. The students were quickly divided up the participants in the group, divided themselves up into the group, carried the focus um, group discussions, so they carried the uh, focus group discussions, and they also carried out house to house interviews. For the house to house interviews, we did not provide them with the interview questions. They came prepared with their own interview questions, both in English and in Fijian. So they even presented their findings, both in English and in Fijian, so the community elders really appreciated this, presenting the findings in their native language. And so when they came back of the field work, they realized that they wanted to learn more. They wanted to learn more about EIA, about SEA, and how this can be included into climate change, how this can be mainstreamed into climate change. So they started discussing online, sharing information, and finally, they decided that they would hold a stakeholder meeting. So this is all students' initiative. We're just guiding them. So a letter was drafted by the students. It was sent out by the students to relevant um, government departments, NGOs, and they held a stakeholder meeting. Right? So self-regulatory learning when coupled with cultural uh, norms. For the past week, it's very important we have a recognition of traditions, of culture. And when this is coupled with self regulatory learning, it leads to triple loop learning. So um, I, uh, I would like to emphasize a point that Professor Armstrong made yesterday. That students need to be curious. They need to have that drive to learn more. And this is the essence of self regulatory learning. They have that drive. They wanted to learn more. So triple loop learning is what happens when you integrate culture into learning. Okay? So this leads to a dialogue, a dialogue across sectors, across um, stakeholders. It en encourages innovation, creativity, engagement with the topic, and also sustainable development. So like um, the Honorable Dr. Reddy mentioned yesterday, we need to go beyond textbook learning. We need to open the minds of students. We need to give them the perspective, push them beyond their boundaries, 
make them realize that they, could, they can do more. So this is the essence of triple loop learning. So if you go from um, RSD feedback to triple loop learning, there's increase in dialogue and there's increase in autonomy. So what does it all mean for the Pacific? So as Hina mentioned, there was improvement in critical engagement processes. So, so students were able to identify and define their engagement <coughs> hypothesis. Uh, they were able to identify their gaps, um, come up with appropriate methodology. So what does that mean for PC45 students? So this is a climate change cause. It's an environmental issue. So students were able to realize that issues are interconnected. There's cross-cutting issues, there's environmental issues, there's social issues, there's political issues. And they are also able to realize the importance of interdisciplinary uh, thinking, which gives the holistic picture, the whole picture. So recognition of ethical issues is also important, particularly when you're dealing with sensitive issues such as climate change, you're dealing with vulnerability, you're dealing with migration, you're dealing with adaptation. So it's important to also develop your methodology in a way that it incorporates traditions. So when you go into the community, you don't provoke anyone, you, you go into the community with the mentality that you'll be sensitive and you'll be able to get the data also. So such awareness of key concept Scope and limitation is critical, and this is best developed with an integrated framework, such as triple loop learning. <coughs> so for conclusion, we can say that RSD was used as an effective tool to report and improvement on critical engagement processes for noted. So before I end this um, presentation, I would like to acknowledge some people who have helped Hina and I with this presentation. We would like to acknowledge Dr. Kia for his valuable insight. We would also like to acknowledge um, Mr. Reddy from the research office for helping us with the analysis. Um, also Mr. Jainesh from PACE-SD for helping me prepare this presentation. And my PACE-SD colleagues at the front and also at the back. Thank you. Thank you.